<laughs> I thought I told you. Ready? <clears throat> Once I walk to the light, tell my mama not to cry. Tell her death didn't trick me cause I was never afraid to die. But when I die, tell my mama keep her head held high. Try not to be a wreck. Let her know I tried to slip away from the reaper's grip, but he grabbed me by the neck. When I die from a bullet to my head or a bullet to my spine, tell my mama wipe the tears from her face and press rewind. Her memories tell when I took my first steps to win. Sore breasts kept my mouth wet instead of baby formula. Let's reset my first breaths so you can imagine what my last one sounded like. Speak my name in abundance. Tell all my friends I used to run with to let my name roll up their tongue for the remainder of their days, cause when I die, let my soul rest in stains, let my soul set in sky, so when I cry, you feel my rain. When I die, I hope my soul will feel no pain. Just bottle on my sins so they can be ingrained in the seams of your skirt and the stitching of your purse and a amen for me every time you go to church. I know it's gonna hurt. They can't see you weak. You gotta stay strong, ma. They can't see you weak. Fry. It's bosky, bitch. <laughs> I thought I told you. Peace, love, and rosemary grease. It's your one only goddess, Rebel Jones. We in a building right here in Brooklyn, New York, about to have an amazing interview with the one and only goddess, Sura Ali. She is Brooklyn bred like your one and only goddess, Rebel. But more importantly, she is the voice of the nation, voice of the youth, and voice of the poetry artistry community. And I say the voice because truly her voice is powerful and she's beyond her potential. She's brought in communities together through poetry. She's even broken up the worst kind of conflicts with just her voice. And that's why we have her today here on The Process, living in the process. I can't be the only one that feel like I gotta have faith and hope if I'm gonna keep going while I'm here, you know, so. Sura Ali sitting with Rebel. What's good, sis? Everything, I guess. Everything? You guess. Mm -hmm. I agree. Everything is good. All right. I brought you here today on Living in the Process because I want to know a little bit about your process. We met back in 2016 through Melanin NYC, but we have a connection, I feel, that is deep rooted into our DNA. Very similar backgrounds, very similar mm -hmm. stories, but even more, we reaching for the stars because we are the stars. But I want to know about your process to progress. So why did you start Black Like Me? Um, well, Black Like Me is for Black artists and Black artists alike, like myself. That's for anybody that look like me but don't identify mm -hmm. as me. You get what I'm saying? You're still <laughs> Black Like Me. But um, it's for black artists to come and express themselves through their pain, their traumas, uh, their joy, their goals, whatever it is, whatever, whatever they're trying to express, they're expressing it through their artistry, whether that be visual art, painting, taking photos, um, rapping, singing. Me, I do poetry and I rap. So I was doing it for a while before I had started. Well, actually, I was only doing it for like two years before I started Black Like Me. And I really started it in a hair salon um, because one of my hairstylists was seeing like what I was doing. So she was just like, you should have something because you, sh you should be getting paid for what you're doing. And that's how I feel too. So that's really why I did it for those two reasons. But mainly the, the main reason for real is because I need to be getting paid for what I'm yes. doing at the end of the day. Ain't nothing out here for free. So there is that. And it's your birthright to have any trade in exchange for your artistry. I mean, we trade our time and our energy for other people's dreams and their entities. So I do agree with the lady who told you that 100%. But when I'm at Black Like Me with you, I don't feel like it's about monetization at all. That's important, though. I, don't, I truly do not believe in... I've, I've done things out the love and off the love and yeah. everything like that, as you should, but that's when that's being reciprocated in the same way. I mm -hmm. truly don't believe in, just like how it is with karma, how you put things out and they'll come back, but it, it won't always come back the same way. When it comes to my artistry, 
Nah, uh, that that has to have a price tag to it. I'm not doing this shit for free. I've done it free enough, yes. literally for years. Like, yeah. So yeah, don't don't get it confused. It is for the people at the end of the day. But I truly believe in social economics. Yes, that's one of the principles in Kwanzaa. Yes. One of the principles that they say Cooperative black economics. people need in order to thrive as a community. Mm -hmm. So. Y'all need to recycle that black dollar. Y'all gonna go buy it on weed. I mean, that's the recycling it <laughs> for the black dollar. That's but y'all gonna go. Sure. Y'all gonna go pay for it at the Chinese nail salon, the Korean nail salon. Mm -hmm. You gonna get your hair done by by the Puerto Ricans and the Dominicans? Nah, send that bread. <laughs> like that's it. Speaking of the black dollar, what do you spend your money on? Um, food and rent <laughs> and traveling, so literally. <laughs> Oh. Yes, travel's a big deal. And I saw that you did your recent music video out in Atlanta. What brought you out to Atlanta? Oh, I go back and forth there. I got friends out there that do music. Mm -hmm. I know producers out there. Um, but that wasn't recent, though. That was uh, like in, during the summertime, I think like in June. Mm. So, yeah, I be in Atlanta back and forth. So... How did you enjoy shooting and what, what brought about the environment of that video shoot for that particular song? Why that particular song? Because it's an old school song and I think that it was good for the aesthetic. Like it resonated with roller skating. Because they took Empire away from us out here in New York. Mm -hmm. And that was a spot <laughs> as a teenager. Did you ever go? Yeah, but that wasn't my era though. What? That era is, a, is a oh, dang, of me. She made me sound old just now, <laughs> y'all. She was like, that wasn't my era. <laughs> Okay, but in any event, tell me about your process to grow. How many black like me's did it take for people to recognize what you were actually doing in the community? Well, I honestly feel like if I wasn't doing black like me by myself, like if I if I wasn't doing it on a on a whim or if I had better, because I'm doing I'm winging it basically. You get what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I decided like let me put this together. Let me see who want to perform. Whatever the case is, who who I like in terms of their talent, how I like their talent, whatever it is. Um, and then I just threw it together. But I think that for the amount of time that I've been doing it, it should have been bigger. But that's because I don't know what other steps I'm supposed to be making to make it bigger, to make it like a, a powerhouse thing, you know? like a And I don't mean powerhouse like the music thing. I mean, like, like expand the yeah, audience. yeah, like for it to be yeah. Big. Because I go to people's events and things like that and there are other great artists. There there there's a lot of talent, like in every field, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot, a lot. Yes. But when I pull up to these people's events, it's different. <laughs> like mm. it, it would have been good without me, but now that I'm here and it's great yes. with me. Right. So it's just like I I be going viral on other people's platforms and shit. So people recognize me for my talent, but in terms of my uh, black like me's that I have, it is not as big as it's supposed to be. And it, I think it will be though. It's I just mean, a matter of time. And you said you didn't know what steps to take, but I think just that, that consistency, like every time you do it, it grows a little bigger. And I think it is up to the people who are coming to show up with somebody else. Because that's how you really make it grow. Word of mouth. Yeah. So tell me about this book that you have, The Black Like Me Poetry Book. What brought the poetry book together? Well, during the pandemic, uh, I went viral on TikTok. And um, people was asking me, like, where can I find your work? Where can I find these poems? Blah, blah, blah. And I saw this girl, um, doing poetry on her Apple Music. I mean, it was cool or whatever, but I was just like, like I said, I gotta get paid for this shit. Like, <laughs> streaming, you could you could literally just rewatch my videos over and over if you want something that's for free. So when I seen that people kept trying to figure out where can they find my stuff, where can they find my stuff, I created a album of poetry mm. that you have to purchase from me directly, mm -hmm. and then you have to download it, and eventually it the link will expire, so you get it while you can, and then you just hold on to it. So after that, I was just like, you know what? I need to create a book, um, some of my favorite poems that I've written, and I need to have something that's here when I'm not, so. What are the most 
challenging things that you experienced in being black and being a woman? Um, judgment mm -hmm. and misunderstanding. What do you think people misunderstand about us being black? Um, I think that when you are a black woman, people have a certain um, perspective of how you're supposed to act, just as a woman in general, but you cannot have a certain level of expression or a certain level of assertiveness when you are a black woman because then it comes off as aggression or it comes off as disdain or it comes off as unpleasant, mm -hmm. but everybody else can say how they feel or say what they want or, I mean, everybody else in America, because we know that women all over universally aren't treated properly and they're, they aren't respected worldwide. So I think that that's where the disconnect lies when it comes to black women, because I'm vocal, mm -hmm. but I was silent before. I haven't always been vocal. I had to find my voice. So um, I just think that that's the biggest thing for black women is that we have to try to fit a narrative or a stereotype or how people want us to act. And I think that that's probably where some of my um, like rebellion comes from mm -hmm. is that <laughs> is that Very people true. like I don't like people to think that they know what I'm doing or who I am because then I'm gonna have to show you something different <laughs> like mm. don't try to clock my moves or clock how I am or think that you can dictate what I am or who I am or my next like, move based yeah. on what you see or what I present in the first in, in interaction with each other yeah for sure yep so I can relate to that a lot. I mean, that's why I go by Rebel, because I think people see the braids. I do a little dots on my face, and that's, for me, that's my personal experience in that time, in that moment. Mm. But then when I step out of that, and I decide I'm going with the wind, I'm doing something else, it's like, oh, she switched up. And it's like, absolutely the fucking right mm -hmm. part of my language. But mm -hmm. I want to be able to adapt to an environment. And I also always reach for another situation that's better than where I came from or where I'm at. How does that, how do you get through your process of being able to shift when you see people trying to size or calculate your next step? How do you process that? And how do you make your, how do you make your switch up? I isolate. Mm. That's the thing that I do. It's a Libra thing though. Mm. I can't relate, I'm a Taurus. But being a hermit is a healthy thing though. Being able to take time and recuperate, regenerate, and then get back out there in the world. Be like, where y'all been? Where you been, Sura? Where you been? Where you been at? He's like, I've been right here doing more work. So, I mean, I really want to know more so, like, when I see you, you be like, it's my sister, it's my cousin. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel that way about me? Well, I ain't about to tell them why. Why? I'm about to tell I them why. I don't want them to know me. Oh. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what I think without revealing that. Mm -hmm. One, when we met, we both had the same feeling about love, like where we come from. Mm -hmm. One, we love being from Brooklyn. But the love of a mother runs so deep into us. Because I do, when I'm around you at least, I'm like, oh my God, this girl is so nurturing, so loving. But she will knock, knock you the F out, mm -hmm. like real quick if you get <laughs> slick. And you'd be like, what? But again, that's not all of you. You're a multifaceted woman. Mm -hmm. And that's what it, for me, that's what it means to be black. But that's the connection I have with you. And so I feel softer when I'm around you. I want to be like extra huggy. But now I'm like, I don't know. Is it the day? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I'd be like, hmm, I'm a little moody. But mm -hmm. mm, is it the time to give her a hug? Because she might give me the, mm, right? And then keep, <laughs> <laughs> keep it moving. But that's what makes me feel related to you. And even more so now that you have music out, mm -hmm. I feel even closer to like, damn, hey, did you hear what she just said? Like, just in one of your lyrics, you mentioned like, F love, like I'm not with it. But why? Because you seem such like a lovable person, especially what you do with Black Like Me. And your poems too, being able to reveal that, that grittiness, that realness that we experience as Black women, that's love, that's a form of love. But why give up form of? or at least love through monogamous relationships? 
Um, I wouldn't say I give up on it. Thank God, y'all. Thank God. But I do say that I keep my distance from people. Everybody got some shit going on with them mm -hmm. that they working through. Some people is aware of it. Some people is not. And I got my own shit that I got to deal with. A lot of past trauma that I have. A lot of childhood trauma. Even... It don't even go far back for real. I, I could go in the past five years or the past three years and I could find <laughs> shit that done switched my, my thought process. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I, I'm not, that's not my focus. My focus is really my career and reaching where I want to reach. And I don't really know, you people, people, I could read people, I can't read everybody. Mm. And I don't know who shapeshifters, I don't know who's, Waiting to shut their skin. I don't know who's moving different from what they showing me. So I say that to say it's people that could be looking like you and I, mm. looking happy, but deep down inside they got a lot of demons that they battling, mm -hmm. or they don't believe in themselves, or they don't even really love themselves for real. Mm -hmm. So if you sitting there mixing up with people that's like that and you unaware of it, you blocking shit from yourself. Mm -hmm. So because I can't read that and I don't know that for sure, like I'm in my process of manifesting right now. Yes. Like I've, I went a couple of months without having sex or whatever, but during that time I got a lot of things done and that's cause I'm not, Worried about what nobody else is doing. What 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 is he doing while I'm asleep? What are they doing when I'm doing this, this, that, and the third? Like I really can't focus because, just like you said, I'm so love has been so absent in my life on a romantic level mm. that when I get it, I overindulge in it and I crave it too much. So it's not something that's very positive for me unless it's somebody that knows how to give it, yeah. so. Give it unconditionally, and that's a task in itself. Oh man, okay, loving yourself seems to be the very two year, however long year trend. Do you think that it's possible to love someone else without knowing the different forms of loving yourself? And I say different forms specifically because I love myself a certain way, but when I'm loving someone else, like maybe I'm spending more time with you and I'm learning to love you, I'm learning the ways you love or the way my husband loves or the way my friends love. They, or Everyone loves differently, but does that, if I don't love the way that they love, do you think that that means that I don't really know how to love? No, you're just not the person that could love them. You can't give them what they need. Mm. You can't provide that. Everybody got a different love language. Everybody know how to give love differently, like you said, but just because you you show love through giving gifts, that's not that probably is not what I need. Mm. So if you're willing to shift, cool, but you don't have to. You can mm. literally find somebody that's accommodating to that's the what you want. Mm. So Well, speaking of accommodating, do you think you could help me out with something? I got a little dilemma. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. My dilemma is I'm shifting from, in my process, from being a rebel to possibly being something else. And it's because I want to get the message, but I feel like many times I have to kind of go under the radar and I can't let people know my every move. Because like yourself, people don't always present themselves long term as they once did it for the first impression. And I'm not really capable of putting on a mask, like it's really difficult for me to kind of turn the switch on, turn the switch off. Like I would lose my mind. It gives you BPD a little <laughs> bit. Like, like, I'm like, who am I, where am I? So being a black woman, being multifaceted, what would you say or what advice would you have for women who feel like, damn, I don't know what my image should be to get where I want to be success? Because like you said in your song, I got to do strip. What I gotta do, but I'm not gonna do it. It's not, <laughs> you know, I was bumping it on my way here. I'm not gonna strip. I'm not going to sell my body or sell an image to get what I want. However, that seems to be the only way to get people's attention, especially entertainment and what we do through poetry and music. What is your advice? Like, what could I do so I don't, cause I don't, I don't have that switch for real. This is, this is what I got y'all. This is who I am. And I love that about me, but I, I got places to go and I don't know, I gotta knock people out on the way up there. What I gotta do? 
I gotta get my machete or something. What what's your advice? What do you what do you have? What's your take on it? Well, I mean, I don't got no advice for real because mm-hmm. I post my body. <laughs> like I post uh, revealing things. I do all of these things because I know that that's what people is attracted to. And I'm also from that era. Like mm-hmm. that that's the era that we live in. And my extreme like Meg or sexy red and ice spice, like is is my body, my, um, my staple is not. But that's just the era that we in right now, you know? Mm-hmm. Like sex sells, it always has sold. So I don't really have no advice. For that, because she said, "Figure that shit on your own." <laughs> <laughs> but I hear you though. You have your choice of what makes you comfortable, and you know what works. You know your strategies. So I just gotta find mine on my own. Because honestly, a lot of times, what I'm talking about, people only know what I'm talking about because they looked at me first. Mm. Like mm. nobody don't respectfully, and I'm not trying to sound no way, but don't nobody want to see nobody that's up there telling black people how they like, you know, love each other or this is that with somebody that's got the incense with uncombed hair or uncombed locks mm-hmm. and all of them big clothes because they want to save the earth for, you know, shit like that. It's mm-hmm. levels to consciousness, you mm-hmm. know, it's levels to it. So mm-hmm. I do what I do because I'm a duality. So I'm going to show y'all that I can relate to y'all on a hood level because that's going to draw y'all into me and then I'm going to educate y'all on a systematic level because y'all listening now, so. Yeah. Mm. Well, gotta have your strategies is what I learned from that. You working it, you doing it. (laughs) Okay, with that being said, my final question to you is a really deep personal question, which you agreed on, just make sure we make that clear. (laughs) When it comes to having the support that you need to get where you're going, how have you managed to do it without it? And how, All right, you, so how, and how have you learned? One of the big things in my life, one of the big, uh, I guess we call that a rising action before you hit the climax True. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Cause my life always been wild. Like it's always been crazy for the most part, but it don't seem crazy to people that's like us because everybody be going through the same shit. But I think that that's where we be lacking compassion for me for each other when we be going through the same shit. So, mm-hmm. anyways, a big part in my life, um, my rising before the climax is when I was homeless, and that was in 2016. I was homeless for six months, and then I got a crib. Well, a roommate situation, obviously, it's NYC in 2017 or whatever. But I ain't have no support. I I just have myself. I ain't have no family, just like a few of my friends or whatever. So I'm my own motivation. I'm I'm my own source of love for real. And I think that that's also another reason why, I forgot to say this actually, the main reason why I really have black like me, like from the beginning or whatever is because I needed a, a space for love, a space where love was gonna be in abundance in a space where I'm admired and I'm seen for who I am instead of who I was raised as. So there's that. Well, I love you. Thanks, love and you I'm too. I'm grateful for you and your existence, 100%. Thanks. And I say that without the camera on. You know that. Yeah, turn the camera off real quick. Thank you. Thank you. Imagine what my last one sounded like. Speak my name in abundance. Tell all my friends I used to run with to let my name roll off their tongue for the remainder of their days. Cause when I die, let my soul rest in stains. Let my soul set in sky. So when I cry, you feel my rain. When I die, I hope my soul will feel no pain. Just bottle all my sins so they can be ingrained in the seams of your skirt and the stitching in your purse and the amen for me every time you go to church. All right, so Surah. Speaking of all the support, you've pushed yourself past the limit and you bought yourself great success and you have more success to go towards. And so with that being said, tell us about Apollo. How did you snag that opportunity and what was the experience like letting all those people hear your amazing voice and your amazing talent through poetry? Well, first off, let me say shout outs to PMP. Poetry me, please. Yes. Um, y'all done got good footage of me. 
um, <laughs> over the course of two years, you know. Um, Russia hit me up. Uh, I feel like it was like 2022. Mm-hmm. He hit me up to, I guess somebody had, to, had told him about me. Mm-hmm. So he asked me to perform at this venue that was in the city. So I went there, I did a little one two. That poem had went viral, but that's the that's my ode to black girls. That poem always goes viral. But they posted it and went viral again. And um, then I performed for their Valentine's Day thing. That was in 2020. I think that was 2022. Mm. Yeah. Um, or 2023. February 2023, I did their Valentine's Day thing. And then they was doing a competition, like this the submissions for Apollo. Yes. yes. Cause I was just like, I wanted to perform or whatever. And they was like, oh, we're doing submissions, blah, blah, blah. And they chose their people, but then they was like, oh, we should um, choose somebody that's from Brooklyn, that's a native and blah, blah, blah. Right. So then they hit me up and was like, oh, we want you to come to the Apollo oh, okay. to perform. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, great. Like I was so excited. Mm-hmm. And, um, it was sold out 1,500 people plus, yes. and it was a great experience. Um, I, I did go, I did get like 2,000 more followers like from then to him posting it, and then, you know, people seeing my craft and stuff like that, so that was good. I mean, I was just super excited because it was an opportunity to, be, to perform at a Black historical landmark. Yes. You know, it's been open since 1914. Yes. So to be there 110 years later, wow. it was just and then rubbing the trunk and all yes. that. It was just like, mm-hmm. you know, like a great opportunity. So I'm very yes. grateful for that opportunity. But like I said in the beginning, monetization is the key. And social economics yes. and collective yeah. Yes, cooperative economics. That's key. Collectively. So yeah. I just think that, you know, overall for something that was so big like that, I think, yes, absolutely. Because that wasn't a one-person show. That was a six-people show, you mm-hmm. know? So it definitely should have been... Somewhere where yeah. you got some money. Yeah, some, yeah 110%. Or, like, or even like having... I think, too, I think when people think about monetizing, they only think about the exchange of the dollar. But put me in the studio. Get me the right producer. Let me go create an album. Give me that kind of opportunity to put me in front of the bag. Or the, take me to the send college. Send me a direction. Like. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, like, I, and I do that in business. Like, bartering is such a great deal, but you have to make sure it aligns with what you want. Mm-hmm. And then many people forget that factor. Like, if you can put me in front of what it is that I actually will spend the money on, then you've just taken care of that expense. And I think that's what, when we talk about cropping up economics, people miss that point so often. All right. So, we want to get into the fact that you went from poetry to rapping from the voice and being powerful and talking about all the things black to getting into your personal stories and stories that you've witnessed. Let's get into Let Me Think. How did that song come about? Like what was on your mind and who was that song about? All right, so let's just get into what the first lyrics is. It's all my old niggas trying to relink. Let me think. Ain't shit to rethink. I leave the past in the past. Mm. I don't spin the block. I don't relapse. I don't need that. I like the other side where the grass is really green at. Whoopies mm. on their knees, knee, knee pads. Niggas need me like Remy knee pad. Mm. Like goofy niggas still knee cap, right? Mm-hmm. So basically, like. <laughs> she said the first line. That was first. Yeah, the whole first. Let's go first. <laughs> chorus. Yeah. Basically, the hook. Yeah. That's my chorus. But I wrote that because, well, one, I'm really good at. Um, at Poetry, like I, I am really a poet. Like I, everything that I speak, it, it is a poem for real. So um, when this person had hit me up or whatever, this dick rider, e- I want that. To, I want, I want that to be in there. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna leave that. So just <laughs> when get get this to me about. Okay. <laughs> All right. So for let me think. Right. So long story short, like I was having this real back and forth, but. but that's the thing, you know, you're a Taurus, I'm a Libra, mm-hmm. our ruling planet is Venus. We yes. are very loving. Yeah. But for Libra specifically, they say that Libras with love, we got the type of love that makes people feel like our love is specifically for them because we're very yes. uh, like the observative. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. we very attentive. Very That's the thoughtful. word. Mm-hmm. So 
I say that to say, like, everybody that leave want to come back. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> everybody. Like, it don't even matter if Ooh. there was a falling out. They want to come back. So mm. one day, this, I go months. This is one of my, this is this is some, I ain't even about to call it uh, my anything because I don't like to have, um, what's the word? I don't like to have ownership over something that I don't fucking like. Mm. So this person, they call me. They like, oh yeah, we should hang out sometimes, you know. We should, um, we should like, you know, maybe we can be friends. Like honestly, like maybe you can. Eat <laughs> but then I really did. I really was thinking for hmm. a little bit, and that's how I was like, let me think. Like nah, ain't shit to rethink. Like you lead a past where it's at. You don't mm -hmm. spin a block. You don't relapse. Like so, that's real life shit. Like mm -hmm. that's how I wrote. I mean, most of my shit that I write. Is real life shit, whether it be my shit or a close friend or a family or whatever the case is. Right. Like, it's real shit. So that's how I came up with that. Like most of my shit, though, like a lot. Let me just say a lot. A lot of my stuff come from heartbreak, for real. Mm. Even down to the shit that I've written, you know, about family shit or whatever. Like a lot of it is rooted in heartbreak. Or let me not even say that. It's rooted in betrayal, because. Mm. I've experienced a lot of that family betrayal, friendship betrayal, and relationship. I, I, anyways, <laughs> relationship <laughs> betrayal. So a lot of the shit that I write is rooted in that. And that's how I came up with Let Me Think. I think that is good for like the ladies, you know, that's thinking about going back to something that they already know that don't do it, didn't sis. serve them, you don't know? Do it. Don't do if it. If it didn't serve you the first time, it ain't... I mean, you could try a second time. But after the second time, <laughs> this is it ain't time. no more trying. Sheesh. Yeah, because sometimes you could tell, you could let the person know. Everybody don't know right away what your boundaries are or, you know, oh, well, what I'm you like no, or, or what you don't like. But you are, but a lot of people aren't. Well, I need to be because so, you are wasting time. If, you know, you make a mistake. Okay, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, I can give grace on that, but after the second time, it's not but a mistake. you don't feel weird, though? Like, the first time, how do you move past that? Like, how do, when somebody makes a mistake, and it's kind of like, okay, maybe you're not, let's say, hypothetically, you're not upfront with them about what your boundaries are, so, and they make that mistake, and you tell them. Okay. And they're like, man, that's, not, like, that's normal for me. And they try to argue with you and be like, well, I didn't know, but that's normal for me. Usually I don't do that. Well, that What's your conversation like? That is... Like, let me think. You know what in the past? <laughs> <laughs> that's a normal response for real, for mm -hmm. anybody. Like, it takes time to process certain things for real. But one of the things that I learned... Well, I didn't, I didn't learn this. I, I, didn't, I didn't really fully take it in, but you really got to be willing to cut off anybody about your respect but i believe in showing grace for real so yeah, yeah. all right situational so then what you put on hold because that's your newest drop oh hold let's on let's talk about hold on oh hold on that's for the ladies too you know it's just me talking my fly shit regular fly shit mm -hmm. um i actually had started writing that um when i was hanging out with one of my friends like he honestly helped like I don't know, like I, I like I wrote it with my own idea, you get what I'm saying? But he gave me some creative influence, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was able to write that when I was hanging out with one of my friends or whatever. And um, how does that one? I start that one with, um, how does that one? Oh yeah, <laughs> that one start with secretly I pray for love, but when I say fuck love, I don't need it, why? It's because niggas always thinking with their penis. All my things is very similar. Just like mm -hmm. I talk about mine in a hundred different ways. I could talk about love mm -hmm. in a hundred different ways, heartbreak in a hundred different ways, anger a hundred different ways. So there's that. That's that creativity in you that you can't let go. If you like the song, Let Me Think and Hold On, streaming everywhere on all platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, you can find Suva Ali right there. And also copy a book, because I know I'm compromised today. It's, I mean, it's, it's overdue. Black Like Me by Suva Ali, a collection of beautiful poems. 
some that you might have heard if you've been to the Black Like Me event, and some that you're just waiting to get your hands on. So don't wait any longer. Get the Black Like Me book now, and make sure you go stream my girl, Suva Ali, on all platforms. And make sure you tune in, repost this, tag, subscribe, and stay tuned, because we got more. Thank you. I thought I told you.